Headline news most affecting Chilliwack this week. More good news for the little toddler from Hope who almost lost his life in Cultus Lake. A major hotel project has been unveiled for Chilliwack. Canada Day will have plenty of things to do, but no fireworks. And the GW Graham Grizzlies shake up the coaching situation. Our guest this week, Chilliwack MLA Dan Coulter, and guess who will have to interview him? You'll have to watch to find out. All right, Chilliwack, let's get started. An update on Raya, the Hope three-year-old who almost lost his life after a near drowning in Cultus Lake at the start of June. Raya will be going to New Orleans with his parents shortly along with a traveling nurse to receive intense oxygen therapy, hyperbaric oxygen therapy for his brain. The family has sought counsel on this and feels this is the best solution for next steps recovery. The GoFundMe page continues for the expenses that the family have and will continue to endure. This is a three-month program and this particular clinic specializes in treating young children who have drowned and proven success with the child regaining normal brain function, allowing the child to live a healthy, active life. The Old Best Western makes way for something new. SEPCO announced a new 150-room Marriott brand hotel is coming to Chilliwack's Highway 1 interchange at Lickman Road. The hotel will be a dual-branded Fairfield Inn and Suites and Town Place Suites by Marriott. The Marriott Hotel will be a key anchor tenant at the Fraser Gateway Center, a new 12.4-acre development expected to support increased economic and tourism activity in Chilliwack and the Lower Mainland. Density Developments is also in discussion with tenants for a service station and family restaurant. The northern portion of the development will be a light industrial business park with up to 25 small and large bay warehouse units. BCLC started to implement enhanced identification requirements at BC casinos to support people enrolled in its Game Break self-exclusion program. BC, BC casinos will require every individual to present government-issued photo identification for entry. This ID will be scanned by security staff and automatically checked against the database of individuals restricted from entering gambling facilities, like those enrolled in Game Break. This applies to Elements Casino in Chilliwack. A reminder from Fraser Valley Regional District that parking fees are in effect until October 29th at Dudney Regional Park and Island 22 Regional Park. Passes can be purchased at the gatehouse near the park entrances. Dudney is cash only, $5 for the day and $25 for the summer. From cultural exhibits and pancake breakfasts to food trucks and live music, Canada Day in Chilliwack will be a full day of fun activities for the whole family. Note, there will not be fireworks, even though for the time being the campfire restrictions are lifted. The city will use the Canada Day fireworks at a later date. The plan is for a program celebrating the 150th anniversary of Chilliwack's incorporation. More information can be found on the city's social media. Don't let the recent damp weather fool you. The province is urging people across British Columbia, British Columbia to conserve water as current forecasts suggest much of the province will experience drought conditions through the summer months. Last year, we experienced drought from August to October 2022. Roger Panett with Environment Canada has been monitoring drought in the Fraser Valley and told FBN that in earnest, it started in May. The freshest was literally over by the start of June. While the recent rains have provided relief for some regions in BC, it has not been enough to overcome the limited rain and preci precipitation from previous months. The increased flows that are present in some streams and river systems are likely to be short-lived. Areas currently under drought level 4 include the East Peace, Fort Nelson, and Finlay areas. Maj the majority of other watershed basins in BC are in drought levels 2 or 3. That includes us. The Chilliwack Community Arts Council is seeking unique artists and talent to display at the 4th Annual Vetter River Art Walk. The event this year will be on August 27th. Email dragonfly at chilliwackartscouncil.com if you're interested in participating or if you would like more information. Chosen artists and entertainers will be compensated. Dan Coulter is the MLA for the riding of Chilliwack, and right now we're going to watch an interview with Chill TV's news director, Don Lane, back for the first time since his recent medical leave. He sits down with the MLA to catch up on various topics. And after the interview, I'll be back with sports.
News of the Week continues with MLA Dan Coulter, the MLA for Chilliwack, and we uh, talked to all the politicians in the Fraser Valley on both Abbey TV and Chill TV. Dan, we got a lot of things to, to catch up on, but the, the first one, uh, your work uh, as Minister for Transit and Infrastructure, we got to talk about the elephant in the room, and that is the transit strike. We're past 100 days. Any word on what's going on with Vince Reddy? He was supposed to have 10 days to get everybody together, and it seems... Very, very quiet. Are, are you even in the loop? Well, I'm in the loop a little bit, and some of the things I can't say, some mm -hmm. things I can say. Um, I will say it's incredibly difficult on uh, on riders here in the Fraser Valley yeah. because our ridership, uh, out of all of our transit system in the entire uh, British Columbia, south of the Fraser, has bounced back to um, more than pre-pandemic yeah. level, levels. And so the people here in, in Chilliwack and Abbotsford and Mission, they really rely on transit. And so I understand you know, how incredibly tough it is for some people, especially you know, seniors and folks with disabilities. Um, but I, I can say that Vince Reddy will be writing a report, which we'll get in the first uh, week of July. Oh, okay. And then um, uh, I think in his report um, will be some recommendations, but we'll we'll see uh, when we go from there. And then I'm sure the labor minister will have a close look at it and we'll talk about it in the Ministry of Transportation as well. And I, I really got, as this was leading up to Vince Reddy coming in from uh, from Harry Baines, that he really didn't want to, to put the hammer down and say, both of you, here's your agreement, go. Uh, he wanted to, everybody to, uh, to, to work this out between the two parties. Uh, am, am I on base on this? I, I, that's the feel I got. Absolutely. Like yeah. we just believe that the the best the best deals are forged at the bargaining table, mm -hmm. and so we're hoping that they come back to the bargaining table, and uh, and you know forge a deal there because that's the best place for uh, collective bargaining. It's something that happens at the at the table, which both parties can uh, can live by. Over the the past few weeks, uh, past well past couple of months, we've had. Our fair share of incidents on Highway 1 and things get shut down, overpasses get clipped by vehicles. Uh, what's, first off, let's, any, any update on safety issues or protocol that has been uh, perhaps uh, suggested to, to those that are involved in the trucking industry and those with, with large rigs? Or is this something that's still ongoing? Like, how do we deal with this? Is, is it a training education issue? Well, it is in somewhat, and then yeah. it's also people floating the law. You're supposed to uh, get a overheight vehicle license. You're supposed to, yeah. um, in order to uh, move loads that are overheight. And with that, they'll give you a map to show you the route um, yeah. to get through uh, an area. Some of these people aren't buying the permits. Some people are either ignoring the, the route map. Um, I don't know. Uh, I can't tell you. Uh, which group does it most, right. yeah. but uh, that's that's what's been happening. And so, um, you know, it's, it's. I mean, mostly it's excavators, if, if you yeah. haven't noticed. Yeah. Because yeah. excavators add a significant amount of height that maybe someone isn't necessarily aware right. of, but they need to, they need to get permits and then they'll, you know, because, uh, you know, hitting these bridges and overpasses is, well, is very dangerous when it happens, but it's also, uh, very expensive in the long run for the province if we have to start, you know, uh, remediating damage or replacing overpasses. Uh, Glover and Bradner, the overpasses there. I, I seem to recall, and maybe I'm I'm off track here, but uh, I, th I think the initial dream of six lanes of Highway One was all the way to Annis. Now it's if it gets to Abbotsford Airport. Uh, where are we here? Or I can understand the cost. That that is is a no brainer. Uh, is this one of the reasons why we're not seeing, sh sh shall we say, so something happening faster when it comes to six lanes to Chilliwack? Well, we're we're going to build the freeway uh, out now uh, for sure to the Sumas exit. Mm -hmm. uh, originally, government's uh, commitment was two kilometers past the Wacom Road exit, but because of the um, atmospheric uh, river and yeah. the flooding there, we've scaled back the project to... Um, to the Sumas exit, mm -hmm. and from there to Chilliwack, we'll have to uh, speak with the city of Abbotsford, our uh, partners in First Nations and stuff, to see um, because we can't have we can't build infrastructure uh, that's going to 
get cut off again. Yeah, that's yeah. going to that's going to strand us, and it's also a nationally significant yeah. highway Whoops. where a lot of goods and services. I was listening to um, folks that uh, live along the number seven corridor yesterday, and they really, uh, you know, pounded home exactly. How much trouble that was for the number seven highway yeah. as well, and even with some of the expansion projects on the seven that have been announced, yeah, uh, between Mission and Maple Ridge, one one kerfuffle and everything just gets gridlocked again. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, the work there isn't complete, but we're working to work the work there complete. But we want to design a freeway that works well with uh, flood mitigation that um, helps the the um, Sumas Prairie drain itself. Yeah as well as doesn't get blocked by any other kind of atmospheric flooding. or uh, A couple of other things, the $125,000 grant for, to the Chilliwack BIA and Ruth and Naomi's. This is expanding the street cleaning employment program. We first heard about this with uh, picking up the cigarette butts, which I think is a phenomenal program to get everybody back in the community. Um, is this an expansion of the, of, pardon, the cigarette butts or other things? that are going to be uh, involved with when it comes to the BIA and Ruth and Naomi's? It is an expansion of that program yeah. uh, that was done through the BIA and Ruth and Naomi's. Yeah. I'm not sure about the scope of the work that people will be doing. I've been told it's to clean up garbage, but also yeah. to be um, ambassadors for downtown. So, you know, maybe someone needs, you know, doesn't quite know where they are, right. or needs to know what a street is. You know, they can also go up to someone with, the, with a vest on. Um, but yeah, it's an excellent program to you know employ those with significant barriers to employment, give them s uh, somewhat of a steady uh, income, and if they're you know looking to recover from an addiction is issue, it really it's really a good start to them going down that road. Uh, I know that you are constantly being asked by other members of government about accessibility and Bernard Elementary. Uh, this is a really cool project. Oh, it's super cool. I'm so excited yeah. about it. I, I I don't know if you've been to Stitos, the uh, the middle school, yeah. and their accessible playground. Yeah, um, that is amazing. I went there. It's just just wheel right onto uh, onto um, onto the onto merry the, go the, round. Yeah. yeah, which was kind of scary because the kids started pushing me around. So <laughs> I, I thought I was going to fling out. Remember those wheels when we were kids? For those of us who are over 50. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and now we're going to do the same at uh, Bernard Elementary. I'm so happy that the government's chosen to fund this accessible playground. It's pretty exciting. Uh, with the spring session, I know you had a ton of work uh, and various bills and various legislations. There was, was there one or two things that really stuck out that, hey, let's let's really get the word out on this. Uh, we were talking about this off air. Uh, yeah, well, we made some changes, I guess, to the Vo Motor Vehicle Act. Yeah. Um, so we made it so that now uh, vehicles must uh, uh, give cyclists at least one meter of room, either uh, from a back or, mm. or passing distance. Actually, I think it's three meters. Three meters. Um, uh, to, you know, protect cyclists as well as the um, the legislation also allowed like, you know, municipalities, municipalities to allow scooters and stuff um, or other mobility uh, devices in the bicycle lanes so that they're not up on the sidewalk. Um, a lot of sidewalks you'll notice are rough and uneven and yeah. for someone using a scooter or a wheelchair like myself, yeah. it can be, you know, sometimes the cycle lane's a little bit better and as, and as long as you're doing it in a safe manner, it's a it's a good place to do it. So uh, I, I'm, I'm excited about that, Bill. When you're talking about accessibility, too, mm -hmm. I mean, to harp on totally about oh, accessibility. Yeah. I'm about so much more, too, Don. Yeah. <laughs> um, but access, accessibility, um, we, um, we uh, did the rollout. We passed the legislation in the fall, but we just did the rollout of, uh, of a passenger uh, um, uh, accessibility transportation uh, initiative. So you'll probably notice that it's very it would be very hard for someone who uses a mobility device to mm -hmm. use an Uber. Or, yeah, right. Or something like that. They don't often have wheelchair accessible vehicles. Yeah. Um, but taxis have to. Yeah. And taxis have a certain amount of them. So we're using a tiny little bit out of each um, ride uh, sharing or ride hailing um, ride to uh, to um, subsidize a program where we um, help uh, taxi companies with maintenance, with training. Um, also, um, so, you know, some taxi drivers don't want to drive accessible ta uh, cabs because they can 
do less trips in a day. Right. Because they have to... They've got to pay bills too. And we, yeah. I, I so can understand that. Yeah. To, to help them with their wages as well as uh, eventually uh, help them with uh, purchasing new vehicles. And on a sidebar note, too, uh, the last between the last time we spoke and this time, Uber finally said we're in, yeah. and uh, that I could hear the hoorays in the in the street. Um, let's be blunt: are is Uber and the taxi industry at least playing nice with each other? I I would I have no I would idea. hope so. <laughs> I, I would hope so. I mean, there's still room for taxi industry yeah. in other cities and other jurisdictions that have ride hailing yeah. apps. There's still uh, room, and I, I've been to Montreal, mm. Gatineau. Uh, yeah. You know that area has ride hailing, and there's still there's still taxis. Yeah, and everybody seems to be getting along. Yeah, yeah. There's enough of demand. Dan Coulter, MLA for Chilliwack. Again, a big thank you. Thank you for having me, Don. Anytime. You're watching News of the Week. Coaches are hired to be, well, fired, replaced, etc. The GW Graham High School football program is the envy of many provincial high schools. Luke Atchison, who led the Grizzlies to a provincial championship in 2021 and a provincial final in 2022, is now out. GW Graham's athletic director, Jake Mortson, announced the new head coach is Reich Pichet. The school isn't saying why he is no longer the head coach, but the school's principal, Chuck Lawson, said this was a difficult decision. The main camp for the Valley Huskers starts Sunday, July 2nd. The team still needs billets, so if your family can pitch in, contact the Huskers' office. The home schedule starts against the Langley Rams on July 29th at Exhibition Stadium and the annual Cascade Cup game. Student athletes from across Canada West Championship sports can now circle their calendars. The conference has officially unveiled its 2023-24 championship sport host locations and schedule. The action starts with the conference golf teams converging on Abbotsford for the Canada West Golf Championships hosted by the University of Fraser Valley from October 2nd to the 3rd. Participants will be in for a treat with the event taking place at Ledgeview Golf Club, the home course of PGA Tour champions Nick Taylor and Adam Hadwin. The BCHL and the Chilliwack Chiefs released the 2023-2024 schedule with the Wenatchee while leaving the league and retooling for the WHL. A quick revamp of the schedule had to be made. The BCHL season will, will begin on Friday, September 22nd and conclude on Sunday, March 31st and will consist of 54 games for each team. For the Chiefs, they start on the road in Langley on September 22nd and their first home game is the next night, September 23rd at the Coliseum against the Victoria Grizzlies. A shakeup at BC Lacrosse. BC Lacrosse is on the hunt for a new marketing and communications director. Matt Doherty is leaving and the blunt social media release did not state why he was departing. The 2023 BCLA female minor box lacrosse provincials are in mission from July 6th to the 9th. The provincial U15 lacrosse championships head to the island in July 20th to the 23rd. And after the break, carry with the weather. It's going to be an amazing week next week. Nothing but sunshine, up into the high 20s, even up into the 30s. Like, why am I even bothering to tell you people this? Probably because I'm going to get it wrong one of these days. It is going to cloud over, but it's beautiful for the next week at least. Happy Canada Day, everyone. Thanks, Carrie. If you have a local news story you'd like us to report on, send us a note to news at chilltv.ca. Have a fabulous Canada Day long weekend. Stay safe and see you next week.